Thank you very much for the invitation to be here as I feel I'm in my own country. Uh, so, anti security factor uh, was found here in Gothenburg, Sweden. Um, it's in the Sakharovsk University Hospital, all these areas. Uh, one of the biggest uh, university hospitals in Europe, and this is only the third part of the university hospital. And here is the microbiology, virology, and bacterial department. And beside, behind it, is the animal house where this reptile was found, and where I spent a lot of time doing the research together with the team on rats. Um, uh, and I, I spent 14 years in this city, and since 2007, I'm dealing with this reptile, this uh, building on this microbiology department. Uh, and the thing that you realize the first time you turn this building is that rats, they spawn the same all over the world. So, AF is a core anti security factor. Sometimes they write AS or AF, the same thing. So, it's a protein with a molecular weight of 41 uh, kiloducton. Uh, and this red part is 16 amino acids. That's why it's called AF16, and it's the active part. So, it contains the active segments more stable and easy to produce for experimental purposes. So, uh, Professor Stephen Lange is the one who found this, and he was my supervisor, and he told me all about research and about rats and how to deal with them. Uh, he found that the pe people who survive cholera, they have immunity for about one to few weeks. So they started research and found the antibodies. They could not find any antibodies, but they found the peptide, was, which was a uh, reason why the body did not produce or lose water through the glands or the intestine. Um, so that was what he found in the 80s. And in 95, the full sequence of AF was described. And this is the full sequence, and here is the uh, 16 sequence, which is the active part which we are going to talk about. Uh, and anti factor factors present in most living cells and can find into many of them. Um, as you see, many endocrine organs, these molecules could be found. The activation of anti factor usually is inactive, could be activated by toxins like cholera uh, or any inflammation in the body. Uh, also, all intake of special processed cereals uh, could cause or irritate the cholera and cause inflammation, so the antibiotic could be activated. Uh, this is made to in Norway. So, there are anti factors in form of injections, uh, saloma, which is this one, and there's SBC flakes, which is this. They are used already and medical feed that I'm going to show you soon. And the mode of action is really unknown to now, but we think that these together with a flutinin 1, um, after bending to each other and get activated, they start to stabilize the cell membrane um, and regulate the transport of fluids in the cells. How exactly nobody knows, but the apocrines has for sure part of these actions. So, administration of AF16 could be nasally, typically in the eyes, in the mucosa, rectally, intravenously, and subcutaneously. The toxicity of the systemic AF16, uh, we use this in rats, in mini pumps which are inserted under the skin of rats. Uh, for a couple of days, and then we take the, uh, the heart, the lungs, blood vessels, brain, eyes, the foot and eyes, the liver, and we found no side effects. There could be side effects that were not affected, we don't know about that. Uh, other effects of F16 on morbus miniere, these are diseases which are already, um, um, you know, the basic molecular is used. For them, it's not a cure, it's just only to remove the symptoms. 
the Marcus Minier got home and Diaria uh, in Gothenburg used for Diarian children, they give it uh, a rectum. Uh, for mastitis, uh, ulcerative colitis, Marcus Crohn, and migraine, they also use antisecret factor for uh, horse and dog racing. Uh, they don't produce, don't lose a lot of water for the infant's body, so they could run uh, for a longer time. Um, this is Helsinki. So, what we did, the aim of our study was to lower the internal pressure. Uh, we understood that there is some kind of neuroprotective uh, mechanism in, the, um, uh, in using the anticipated factor. So, we started using difficult models, different models. Uh, so, we, we chose tumors, uh, focal neurotrauma, or cruel damage to the brain, and infection uh, such as antiplatics. Uh, it was very difficult to have, you know, models for brain tumors. We used the mammary tumor, the DMB, the DMB and MATB3 uh, in rats. And in these rats, we uh, inserted, uh, uh, you know, the, the SEMBA sensors, which was developed locally in Gothenburg. We put it in the, directly in the, uh, in the tumor or in the tissues around the tumor, and we measured the pressure. That was in Norway. And the other model was focal trauma by freeze injury to the parietal bone with the uh, metal in a uh, uh, liquid nitrogen. Uh, and then we could you know, raise the ICP and measure the ICP and release by the factor. And these are, we, we have like, uh, you know, we put the, this metal on the uh, bone directly, and these are the damage we could get. And uh, herpes and spotty viruses was injected in the nostril of rats. Uh, and symptoms came at five, day five to seven. Uh, so we measured the ICP during this period and we reduced it by the antigen factor. Is the historian of the third part? That was the first paper. The paper of 16 decreased the high tertiary fluid pressure in solid tumors. Um, and here we see the, uh, the pressure before and after day one after day two. So it was before I took the 14 to 16 millimeter of silver and after A and F16 reduced to 4 to 7. Uh, and this is after you know giving the uh, in the in the in the uh, uh, parenchyma and IV for both tumors. The conclusion was that F16 reduced the, uh, the pressure in the tumor trans, uh, transiently, reducing the elevator acid, uh, IFP in the tumors, but to facilitate brain circulation and improve efficacy of the anti tumor therapy. So the chemicals could control the uh, tumors uh, in a better way and get effects. Then, special process serials that increase activity, active anticipatory factor, and prevents intracranial hypertension in a dose dependent manner. Uh, after the cryogenic damage to the brain, um, for rats which were fed with SPC special process cereals, the more concentration of AF in their feed, or the more long the time they put it, found that their response to the damage was much better, or they had less damage. Uh, and we find also that these factors, inflammatory factors C3C and factor H, was also increased in these rats. As you see here, uh, it's a concentration and the periods they got cereals and the ICP here. So these are the controls, and these are, you know, uh, with, uh, with the cereals with A16. <coughs> As you see, the, uh, the pressure is much less. So the pretreatment with SPC, special cereals, which induced active uh, prevents development of high ICP after for the brain injury. Uh, then we um, had two more models. And we published papers that the suppression of the effect of the peptide acid factor on intracranial pressure in rat models of cryogenetic brain injury and in encephalitis. Uh, this is North Sweden. So here, as we had a lot of problems with the sensor, which was developed locally, 
I started to search the internet to get to you know other companies with other devices. So I found the DSI devices, which were used to uh, measure the, to uh, measure the ECG in rats. There was a, a psychologist in Toronto who was using this method to uh, measure the ICP in rats. So that was his method. This is the device called the SI, and this is the string that he cuts and put them inside, and this is the uh, uh, the small screw that he puts in, you know, in the skull, and the electrode goes inside the brain, and he measures the pressure. We found that this system was a little bit, you know, the, the, the whole system is big for the rat's head. Uh, to not make the rat, you know, move freely to measure the pressure. So we developed another um, method. We published it. So this is the my, this is my theater, this is my microscope, and this is anesthesia. Uh, so here I used to operate the rat, and we developed the method by this to get a ring which we put put, put around the the sky uh, device and simple operation. Or all device inside, suture it, and that's it. And this is the free moving rat, uh, no heavy device on the head. The rats move freely, freely, and we put them on the you know, and receiver wireless. And there we measure the ICP. We could measure six rats in rat, same time, continuously, to 12 hours, seven days. Uh, and that was the first time ever anybody. You know, measuring the pressure on rats for four hours, <coughs> uh, and we could also reveal a lot of you know differences in the curve of the ICP uh, that we never was revealed. This is at uh, Trondheim in Norway. So this is ICP in moving rat uh, six days. Okay, if we take this part only, this is it. This is the normal ICP in rat. Should be below six millimeter per second. Um, and how to know that the system is accurate? So, uh, the boss cell of rats, it was only to clap your hands, you know, the rat jumps, the ICP goes up and comes back to the same point as we stopped before. So, we know that the system accurate is working. This is rats moving. There is some uh, activities also <coughs> major. This is rats in that course. You see the curve gets, you know, widened. Uh, and this is a wake rat, but you know, still. This is a, um, a Helsinki. Okay, so the suppression effect of the peptides of the factor on temperature pressure in a rat model of major induced brain injury uh, was revealed, and we could you know, reduce it. As you see here, here is the clinic damage, and after a few hours, the ICP goes up. I usually survive this. And the damage is small. So here the ICP goes up and we give anti factor so it goes down. And here also I created the damage and the anti factor so it goes down again. This is Lapland, Sweden. And then we went to the hypothesis flighters. The device was implanted day prior to the infection. Then we infected the rats. And as you see here, uh, here the infection, then and the day. Uh, four or five, uh, the ICP starts to go up, and then when it goes, it comes down, the symptoms come. The symptoms didn't come when the ICP is high, it comes when the ICP goes down below the, the normal uh, levels, and as you see, we start to give anticipated factor. And a uh, factor could, one minute, okay, could reduce the ICP, but at night, you know, the uh, patient could not survive. And, and then we found that if we start Treating them anti factor on day one when they got down to the infection, all these rats 100 percent survived. This never happened, ever. So, anti factor could, you know, uh, um, reduce the inflammation and they could survive. Here, as you see, the SP never went up when they got anti factor directly after the infection. This is no way. Um, and here is, uh, you know, these are the curves that never was revealed before in its flight as 24 hours as was measured. So, what's next? Well, they started to use anti factor for brain tumors in Sweden, uh, especially terminal patients. 
And it's all very soon in Dubai, we're going to start anti to treat the uh, traumatic brain injury. Uh, this is also two more uh, studies we wrote about uh, acceleration, acceleration injuries to uh, Kenyan rat, uh, to uh, rabbits, as it is to induce the damages. Thank you very much.